What do you think is a big factor in your growth? I had my daughter. When I had my daughter, I was like 22 years old and I was like still like living fast. Can we talk about the story of Ashtray? It's like the epitome of like what addiction is. From that first post, all I know is that I just got to greet you when I see you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's that feeling when you have your first record hit a million, dude? Like just looking at it, knowing that your voice has been heard yeah. a million times. From 2013 till now, like there was a lot of asking why in that, in that thing and figuring out like, oh, this is the best way for me to live my life the happiest and healthiest and I'm the I'm the happiest I ever been bro I can tell I, dude yeah like I'm the happiest I've ever been welcome to the Mike Squires and Friends podcast today I'm joined by Ian Matthew Ian Matthew is a rising musician from the small city of Torrington Connecticut on a journey to share his ever-evolving catalog of uniquely seasoned music with the world Ian's amassed millions of streams on his music and has seen success as an independent artist and content creator the Mike Squires and Friends podcast is proudly sponsored by DistroKid are you an artist seeking to expand your musical horizons look no further than DistroKid. With its seamless and rewarding music distribution system, DistroKid offers unlimited uploads while allowing artists to retain 100% of their royalties and earnings. Join the ranks of millions of artists who trust DistroKid to deliver their music to major platforms such as Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, TikTok, Tidal, and Instagram. Having personally relied on DistroKid since 2018, I can confidently assert its superiority over other distribution services. With the DistroKid app, accessing these benefits is easier than ever. Upload release is on the go, monitor your earnings, withdraw funds from your DistroKid bank, and stay informed about your royalties through push notifications. You can share hyperfollow links, manage account details seamlessly, and track streaming stats from Spotify and Apple. Explore Mixia for professional grade mastering, DistroVid for music video distribution, and Instant Share for secure file sharing with collaborators, producers, and more. The DistroKid app is available now on iOS and Android. Download it today from the App Store and Google Play Store to revolutionize your music career. Visit distrokid.com slash VIP slash Mike Squires to get 30% off your first year membership. Now, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Mike Squires and Friends. It's a big day, dude. I'm happy to be here, brother. Dude, thank you for coming on the Mike Squires and Friends podcast, dude. I'm going to tell you why it's a big day, Ian. We're first time on a new set, yeah, right? This is, Look this at this. Is this, is, this is nice. We've, we've leveled up. First day with a sponsor. Big day. Shout out Distro Kid. Distro Kid. It's a lot of good things happening right now that I'm really excited about. But I, want, I just want to know how you're doing, dude. I'm good, man. I'm good. I've uh, been busy lately. Been very, very busy. But other than that, I'm happy and healthy, so I can't complain. Let's go. What you been working on? <sighs> um, A ton of records just like... I mean, the, the vault is just getting bigger, so we're just, like, adding and adding and then figuring out a release date, but basically we'll have we'll have music coming this whole year, so it's basically record all the music and then figure out what to do with it later. Yeah, That's and we were, we were talking a little bit about, like, a little bit before this that I went on your Instagram all the way back, <laughs> dude, all the way in preparation for this, dude. Like, first post back, like, all the way? I just, From that first post, all I know is that I just got to greet you when I see you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, dude. Yeah, That's dude. awesome. Can we talk about that? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, That's so hilarious. You went by Premiere? Yeah, yeah. So that was that your first artist yeah. name? Yeah, because like my last name is Lemire. So yes. it's like Ian Matthew Lemire. And then when I was I was in church in the choir and um this dude hit me up and he was like, Hey man, like I want you to come sing on a, on one of my records and I was like okay cool I'd never recorded anything in my life but like I played guitar growing up and like you know played shows so I knew you know never recorded so I went to his house and recorded and he was like yo you need a cool name and like he was like what about like premiere and like in my head I was like yeah that's cool like whatever just in a row I didn't think anything of it but then it just kind of stuck like it just stuck and like I used it for a long time yeah so then at what point do you become because then from there you became Ian up north well, so no, that 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 was actually a misconfusion with a lot of people. That was just like my social media handle. Yeah, but I started like people just started calling. Like, if you if you if you uh, go check the Sholey record um, that we did together, it's called My Shooter. Yes, he he tags me as Ian up north because I think he just like like he figured like I don't know. There was that's like how there the was streets confu- knew you. Dude. Yeah, there, yeah. So like <laughs> it was I don't know. Yeah, but it, it was really just my socials. But I was with. You know, my my crew at the time and the team that I was rolling with, we, we call ourselves the kids up north. Yeah. So, like, I, I want to talk about that because 
I did have a little confusion because when I went back to your Selfless album in yeah, 2012, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, that was Ian Matthew. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, he's been Ian Matthew for a minute. Like, and I saw right before that was yeah. premiere. So at what point? So I, all right, so I I I was premiere, and then um, this a great friend of mine now, but at the time he was a complete stranger. Um, his name he goes by Chuck Adams, and at the time he went by Range, and he hit me up and he reached out and he goes, "Yo, you're from Connecticut?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "I'm from I'm from Connecticut too." And he's like, I really like what you're doing. Like, let's link up. And I was like, all right, cool. And I was in, I was in, uh, I was at school in Maine at the time. So he, I, I shot down to New York and I met up with him and I, I was working with his management company for a little while. And um, he told me like right off the bat, he's like, bro, if you, if you Google Premiere, he's like, there's so many. He's like, we need to like narrow it down. And we were thinking about names and like one day on Twitter, I just decided to change my my Twitter name to just Ian Matthew like that was like my my tag was like at Premier eight six zero but like my name just said Ian Matthew and he hit me up he's like yo is that your government name and I was like yeah he's like it sounds like a lawyer he's like you should use that he's like one they can't take it from you two it's like it's it's your own and two it's kind of catchy and I was like all right cool like let's do let's do it let's switch so when I signed with the management company that was the stipulation it was like you're gonna change your name so like I did. And I've rolled with it ever since. And it's funny because, like, when I used to get in trouble, my parents would be like, Ian Matthew, get over here. You know, like, I'd get yeah. it, you know? So now it's like, but it's, it's that's what we go by now. And it's cool. Yeah. So, and then you were part of a collective, the kids up north. Yeah. So when I was in school in Maine, I met this dude, uh, Angel, Angel Ideal. And then he told me, he was like, yo, I got these dudes down in Jersey. He was from Jersey. And so because we were both up north in Connecticut, I mean, in uh, in Maine and me being from Connecticut and him being from Jersey, there was like this tri-state thing kind of going on where we were just kind of like, all right, let's band together. And um, so I went down there while I was in New York with with range and I shoot over to Jersey and go met and, you know, record on, you know, 30th and Kennedy and in, in Union City because they had a studio out there. So I would go have sessions with him in New York and then I'd go over to Jersey and go meet up with Angel and them. And, and you know, there was a left Moochie, uh, Moolah. There was so many people that we, that we used to rock with. And it was so cool because the studio environment at the time was like, it might still be that way now. I haven't been there in, in a while, but it was just, uh, it was a hallway full of studios. There was just people making all types of music everywhere from, from there was never a time where it was like not, in operation so you could just go there whenever and there was somebody in there to record with or just to sit down and hang out during a session it was really cool it was like the environment was amazing it was like music all the time everywhere yeah and your music style has changed a lot since then too yeah. i was i was a rapper i was like 100 percent a rapper to the point where you opened up for raekwon yes yes <laughs> yes dude yeah and i but yeah because we dude that was oh man yeah i did how did that ha you know how did that happen i was up in i was up in maine and um there was a promoter up there at the time and he had put, he would always just, he was like a hip hop head. He was like a hip hop, you know, uh, purist, I guess. And he, he had the audacity, I guess you could call it to bring like these artists up to, up to the North, like where you wouldn't think that they would do well, I guess, but they were like, they were these great shows. You know I mean? It was like, dude, who would have thought to bring Raekwon up here would be awesome. But like, there was so many hip hop heads out there that like, they really came out and it was really dope. It was a great show. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That was like, he hit me up. He's like, yo, you want to do, because we were going to college and like we had a, a decent thing going at the time. So we were like the people to call. Yeah. Do you remember anything specific from that show? I Dude, I actually have a really, really good story from that show. Let's it's talk about it, my, dude. So at the time, uh, we had all the dudes from Jersey come up and we were all staying at, at, at our house in, in Bangor, Maine. And... <laughs> That's way Which up is like there, super dude. north, bro. Like if you go and see like Spos in, in, in like the Portland no, area, you got to drive two hours that, north dude. after that. I've yeah. been to Bangor, dude. I can so, tell you. It's wild. Yeah. yeah so um, they all came up and like, long story short, like tensions just got heated in the house. Like right and like right. The, I think it was like hours before the show. We all got into like this fight and like me and Angel were like not on good terms. But right before the show. We just kind of like went to each other man to man and we're like, yo, like we're about to go rock the show. We have to just, you know, we have to put this shit behind us. And like we dapped up, went on stage, killed it. And then afterwards hugged and we were just like, I mean, what, were we, what were we arguing about? We were just, you know, we were just arguing about some stupid shit like, like men do. Yeah. And then we like made up like men do. But it was just funny because like it was such an emotional moment for like we were both so mad. We were so mad at each other. I remember that. And then like afterwards the music like saved us. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, let's just go out and. 
and have a good time. Yeah, it's like we're never gonna get this chance again. Yeah. So, what point are you starting to release more music as Ian Matthew consistently, or where does your style change? Is kind of where I uh, want to know. Like 2018, I think I was in the studio. I had a studio in Torrington. And I grew up playing guitar. Like, my dad was a guitar player. My grandfather, my grandmother, all guitar players. My brother's guitar player. My uncles, my cousins, like, all of us. So I knew how to play guitar, and I played in punk bands as a kid when I was, like, 12. That was, like, my first intro into, like, making music with other people. So we did, like, battle the bands and shit like that, but then it fizzled out. So I'd be in the studio when I wasn't, you know, working on rap records and I'd be sitting there playing like a Beatles record or you're sitting there just like jamming out, playing my own thing. And one day I was working with James now at the time, James Bai, who was like my longtime, you know, business partner, co-writer. He's like my other half. Yeah, my other half. So like he came in the studio one day and he was like, how come nobody knows you can do that? He's like, that sounded really cool. He's like, why don't you like come up with something? So I had this record that I was working on. Um... I went out to San Francisco, worked on a record, and I, I had it in my head, and I was it was Ashtray, and I had the, the chorus written for it, couldn't figure out what to do with it, and then I was like, all right, well, what about this record? You want to try it with this? All right, cool, let's do it. Did Ashtray, that's how I met T. Biggs as well, mm. and then Ashtray came out, and I was like, okay, let's keep doing this, because this is like, I get to I get to kind of mix the two, and then I just started really having fun writing like, all different genres of music. Let's talk about Ashtray because I know that was like a big moment where, yeah. you know, things definitely started picking up. That was cool. So what was, you know, how did that song get released? What was happening in that moment? Was there a catalyst that made it go? Like, what can you tell us about that moment? The catalyst, I would just say, was like, it was a genuine record. Mm. It was a genuine record that like took me three years to write. So it, it had so many different versions, which like the first verse ended up on a different song, which is which actually got released from another artist. It was like a feature I did. But I felt like that first verse fit so well that I was like, all right, let me add it there and then I'll work on this record later. So I re- ended up rewriting the Ashtray record like three, four times. I think the fact that I worked on it was was the catalyst as well as like the fact that it was just like a real song. The first version was very... Uh, Descript was very like uh, what do you call it Uh, very uh, specific to me okay so like the second time around I was like let me not make it very specific but just focus on the feeling of it and like everybody can relate to the feeling of being up at 3am and like being stressed out rather than like me putting my story into it I just put the feelings into it where like you may not relate to the exact story because the story I wrote it about was actually kind of like deep Um, but if you can relate to the feeling, then you can relate to the song. So I felt like that's what it was. Like, it was just a very relatable song, which I found out later. I didn't think, I was so nervous to release that song. And then everyone was like, this is sick. I was like, whoa. Yeah. And that feeling's probably incredible, dude. Yeah, it was dope. Can we talk about the story of Ashtray? Is that something? So what's it about? It's, it's just a, it's a, it's like an, uh, um, It's like the epitome of like what addiction is or like what um, dependency is on anything. It could be anything um, from drugs to uh, thrills to sex to anything like it could be whatever. Um, I won't really say what my what my like personal thing was that I was writing it about, but it was definitely about like being too deep into something and then wondering like, how do I get myself out? Like, um but also there was I, I on my darker songs you'll always notice like there's a there's always a glimmer of hope in them like mm. I the I will never break but yeah I might bend that was like it's gonna get hard but it's never gonna get hard enough to break me so that was like I always knew that but that always like it didn't take away from the fact that it was like oh you're kind of in a, in a bad situation here so I always wanted to capture like the the grimness of the situation but the hope at at the same time yeah and i've definitely been through my fair of bad situations too but i want to talk to you about you know someone's listening and they're going through a bad situation what's some advice that you could give them to you know maybe give them some hope to get out of whatever situation it might be Uh, i would just say like admit 
to yourself that you have an issue and like the best way to get over it is to like find the help. I find so many people that I come across that are aware of their issues, but like refuse to get the help. And it's like, it's not that I don't have the sympathy, but if you told me you were, you know, you were sick and your lungs hurt or your, your, you know, your chest hurt and you were coughing up X, Y, and Z, you'd go to the doctor. So if you're telling me you're, you know, you're in this situation, you can't get out, there's always, there's, there is help to get out. And like, I, I wish it was easier, I guess, I guess, you know what I mean? For people to, to, to do it. But I would just say like, admit it to yourself and like make that first step, go and like make the change. Like, I mean, you said you went through my Instagram, like you've seen how much my life has changed, bro. Like I've, I've made we some We can like, talk about that, Yeah, dude. like I've made some serious like inner, inner, you know, actions in order to make my life better, you know? So. Yeah, because where I've met you in your life, when I was scrolling back, I was like, damn, this is a different Ian, dude. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And I, like, not in like a bad way, but you've just grown a lot as a person. Because, you know, sometimes you hear about people just like growing in their career, like sonically. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like you know, the way Ian carries himself now yeah. is very different, yeah. you know? So I don't even know what the question would be here, but maybe something along the lines of like, what do you think, you know, was a big factor in your growth? Uh, I had my daughter. Mm. Uh, yeah. When I had my daughter, I was like 22 years old and I was like still like living fast. And it took me a while, even when she was born to stop like living fast. But, um, I don't know. I guess it was just like you put importance on different things. Like I had to learn. I was always, I had the, I, everything was on me, right? Everything was like my issue. I, like I was a person that couldn't say no. If you asked me to do something and I thought it would either be a good time or I thought it would be like beneficial to do it, didn't matter. I would do it. I had to learn how to say no to people. I had to learn how to like, I learned that from you actually. Cause I remember one time we talked about that and I said, yo bro, like how do you, I forgot what it was. I watched you had an exchange with somebody and it was a very like professional, very like polite. No. Yeah. But a you, stern. No. At the same time, like there was like, I'm not, I'm not going back on this, but it was very polite. And I was like, I don't have that. I was like, I don't have the, I hate confrontation. Yeah. So like anytime I used to get in confrontation, I would like blow it out of proportion in, in, in order to try and like alleviate it by, uh, posturing thinking mm. like you know i'm gonna make this such a big situation where you're like oh the f all right all right dude whatever fuck it but in reality i just hated the confrontation so like on these confrontations where it's like business stuff sometimes i, I found it hard to like you know give a give a hard no on something but now i've learned i'm dude i give a hard no all day long like because i know what's important to me now you know like i have to i have to make sure i'm around and budget my time time is so important bro like if i if i waste my time doing something then i'm like I'm, I'm mad at myself later because I could have been doing something else that's either productive for my music career or for my, you know, my family. Like it's all, all these stuff, like all the stuff that I have in my life takes time. You have to like water those seeds and like actually make them grow. And like time is the way that you can do that. So saying no to all the bullshit or things that I think just aren't like going to better my life or the life that's around me, I'm, I'm better at saying no to it. You got to be good at saying no to certain things because you know what's worse than saying no? Saying yes and then being like, what did I get myself into? Exactly. I, bro, I did dude. it a million times, dude. A million times on so many different levels, like personal levels, business levels, where you get there and you're like, what the fuck am I doing here? Because, you know, I got to a point where, you know, you want to please everybody. You yeah. want to, you know, extend yourself as much as you can, but you can't pour from a cup that's empty. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like if you extend yourself and you're not making the time for you, it's just not going to go anywhere. And I think, I think also too, I was so focused on, um, like being successful and like my happiness was based on my success. So mm. like I would do everything in my power to chase being successful and then like forget that I had a family at home that I needed to take care of. And so once I like, and it, I uh, dude, honestly, like my my mindset changed and like you know think but like it, it was a it was a very long process like it wasn't a it wasn't an overnight thing like there was like you know it it was a long process but once i got like myself and my home life right i realized that everything else around me started working cuz like i knew i could come home every day and it was like it was cool everything was you know like find there i didn't have to worry now when i do go out and do this stuff out here I, i'm good i don't have to worry about it i can 
give my 100% while I'm here for the time that I've allowed. Cause like I said, I'm working on budgeting my time now. So now I know like for this next five hours for 10 hours for this session, I can give you 100%. All of my other stuff is taken care of. My life was just so fast back in the day or like, you know, when I was younger that I didn't have a, gra a, gr a grasp on anything. It was like, you know, I was giving 20% here, 20% here, 20% here, 20% here, 20% here, and just trying to make it all work. And you realize you're like, I have nothing to show for this. So like when you cut all the bullshit out and you can just give 100% here, 100% here, 100%, you know, it, and you end up being like, wow, this is pretty nice. This is a nice little life I've created for myself. Yeah. And I think you said something that's really key is that, you know, your family life, but your life outside of your career is really your foundation. Yeah. And that needs to be good because yeah. you don't want to be going, in your case, going to the studio you know, knowing that you have to go back to a mess afterwards. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's it's like depleting or when, or, or even, or even having to go to the studio after leaving from a mess, right? Our, our, our business that we work in is so, you know, is so uh, creative based where like the best way to be creative is when you're in a good mood, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe not, maybe yeah. a, a bad mood will strike that too. But like for me, creatively, I can't go into a creative session sh with, coming out of like a fight or coming out of like a stressful situation. It just ruins that whole creative session for me. And I feel like I'm a shell of what I could be in there. So it's like have, like I said, having all that, I can now go to this session as my best. And that's just me. But personally that worked out great for me because now I'm showing up like today, if I came in here and I wasn't in a good mood, this pod doesn't, doesn't work. You're just, it's very like, okay, well, dude, I had it, such a great morning too. I actually want to share it really quickly. It I know up. it's a little off topic, but I had what I like to call a cinematic morning and you know, I step out the house, the church, I step out exactly at like nine, the church bell a mile away is <laughs> dinging. The fog is like slowly getting lifted from the trees. There's a giant hawk, but you know what I mean? Like, That's sick. yeah, there was a lot of good things. There are these ravens flying around as I'm driving down. I'm like, yo, this is, this is a great morning. But to the point of what we were just saying, you might not be able to appreciate those little things if you got a lot going on and your yeah. mental space is clouded. Oh yeah. You know, so I know that I personally have definitely had experiences where I have come from a bad situation and then, you know, I'm either in front of the camera, I'm doing so I got it. I need to perform. I need, there's something I need to do where I have to like turn it on, even yeah, though yeah. I'm like going through a lot right now. Oh, yeah, you shoot content. Yeah. You but shoot content. You know Has there ever is. been a time in your life where, you know, and we don't have to get the specifics of it, but like you had to like kind of turn that thing on where it's like, you weren't feeling the best, but you just knew that you had to push through it, whether maybe you weren't feeling good, sick or something like. Uh, yeah, I think well, I think that's like the key to um, I think that's the key to being like successful in anything is because, you know, w there's always that saying of like, if you if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Right. But the the trick of it is loving every aspect of what you do, where like. I love, absolutely love. There's nothing more that I love than sitting either by myself and writing a song or sitting in the room with a whole bunch of other artists and writing a song. But the more you get into the business side of it or even just the independent artist side of it, you realize that it's maybe like 30% of the time you're sitting in a room with artists writing a song and recording and that, or maybe, maybe just sitting and writing. And then there's the other part we have to record. And like, if you are an artist and you record and you don't, aren't, you know, you're not perfect. You're going to record that song or maybe like a, you know, it's going to take you a, a little while to record the song and do different takes. You do all this, you know, which can to me get a little boring. So that's like not my favorite part of it. I love the creative side of it to see it come together, but then there's like the content side of it. Now there's the, you know, there's, there's always a part that people don't like. So it's like you, we've seen plenty of people come in and say, you know, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to, I just don't do that. But it's like, what we've learned is in order to do it, you have to play the game. Back in the day, it used to be sit outside the record label with your mixtape or your album and try and hope that someone hears you or you play really good at a club or you do a whole bunch of tours and somebody finds you and then the A&R brings you to the label and da, da, da. There, was a, there was a process. It sucked, but it was a process. Now the process is still a process, but it's changed. And now the, the change is, okay, go get yourself, you know, as as big as you can on your own with the with the platforms you have and here's how you do it. Like, I always say like, we would never know that bounty is the best paper towel unless they, they promoted to us and they told us, Hey, we're the fucking best. We got the best paper towel. Those guys, Charmin with the bears, fuck them. We're not, you know, we, we're bounty. We're good. So it's like, 
it's the same thing. You have to get out there and you have to promote yourself, which like sometimes I understand why it can get taxing and it gets, you know, you see artists talk about it all the time, how like, here's how I take a break from social media or here's how I, you know, find a way to not overwhelm myself while making content. And like, it sounds crazy, but it can get overwhelming. So like, I think finding, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to like it, but going back to the fact that I absolutely love when someone hits me up and is like, Hey, ashtray changed my life or like ashtray. Uh, like I remember once somebody hit me up, they're like, yo man, my dad passed away two months ago and I've had ashtray on for on repeat for those two months, man. And then I just want to say thank you for writing the song. And I was like, fuck, dude. like that's, you know, that right there is like, okay, let's keep going. You know, like I have people that, you know, every time we go live, their notifications are on and they know that I'm going to be playing my unreleased songs. They know the unreleased songs. They're like, can you play this one? And I'm like, how? that's not released, but like, you know, the songs. So like people are, it's, it, you know, it's people are, are reacting to the music and they've told me like, don't stop no matter what. So it's like, even if that is the little percentage of, of what keeps you going, like, I absolutely love that enough to enough where all the other shit doesn't matter to me. Like I'll bear through it. Yeah, dude. I mean, there's a lot that I want to talk about after that because, you know, I think there are a lot of artists that are on the rise right now that, you know, when they get hit up like that, they got to keep going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's oh, yeah. like, cause I think people will get those message and really think like nothing of them sometimes, like maybe not specifically what you said, but like, you know, if you have anybody reaching out to you saying, I like your music, yeah. you got to keep going to the next level. And then another thought I had is that music is very an adapter die industry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I could think of a million artists that were here for one moment and just didn't keep up with it. Entertainment in itself. Yeah. Right? The way that we consume our entertainment. Um, I think the only thing that hasn't really changed is the live show. Like mm. the live show has always been tried and true. And I think that will stay tried and true. Um, there's been adaptions to it. You know, they have like the, the cool, like Travis Scott Fortnite thing where like the live show was now graphic or like, they're going to have the, you know, the headsets now you can watch and it's going to be amazing. But, um, it's just like the, they went from used to be able to sell CDs for 20 bucks a pop. Now you go to a store and someone buys a CD. You're like, what'd you do that for? You can't even play that in your car. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, it's, it's almost weird that they're even selling them anymore. And it's become so obsolete. So like, if you don't, and that's it. And I think that's the thing too, is like, it's not a friendly business. If you don't adapt, you will very much so get left behind. Throat. You know what I mean? Like you take, you go take a vacation and come back and see how your algorithm is. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's tough. Right. So it's, yeah. it's one of those things where like you have to have the love for it. And I think, Luckily, I've made enough friends and a, a big enough, you know, of my own community where, like, I can't really see myself quitting. Like, I told, like, someone asked me, one day, like, did you ever think of it? And I was like, yeah, of course. But then I would go and write a song about quitting music. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it was like this cycle of, like, I'm still doing it. Like, well, I can't stop. Funny. You know, I'm, I'm not going to not, I'm not going to walk by the guitar on my wall and not pick it up and start jamming. It's like, it's just in me. So well, it's like. That's one thing that I learned about you as I was scrolling all the way back to the beginning of your feed is that regardless of anything that was going on in your life at that time, music was the constant. I yeah. like from post one till now, doesn't matter. Like yes, every yeah. other post was just music, dude. So I know that there's no quitting for you, dog. Nah. You're in this, like this is, it's who you are at this point, dog. Yeah, my, like my guy Chuck told me one time, I remember we were talking about, and I asked him, I forgot what I asked him. Uh, but I'll never forget his response. And I was pretty much just like picking his brain on like, you know, the flash in the pan um, artists that were like, all of a sudden they, they seem to just blow up and they're massive and then they just, you know, go away. And like, or like, I forgot, but he basically said, he's like, you can only, you can only fake, you know, fake the funk for a little while. Like if this is what you do, this is what you do. I think we've had this conversation as well. We definitely have. If this is what you do, this is what you do. Where like, you know, rain, sleep, sun, sh you know, whatever, like you're going to be doing this. So like in the good moments I'm doing it. in the bad moments when it's a lull, it's like, this isn't really for, for, it has become for them because they've shown me that they like it. So I will then in turn, like if, if you're connecting with it, I will then, say go ahead have this this can be yours as well but like the, the most of it is for me like a lot of these songs if you go back to them I could tell you exactly where I was in my life because I wrote it for me you know what I mean like so that that kind of stuff I feel like just is it doesn't really go away and you can like hold on to it forever so like if you this if that's what you do like you'll be here in 10 years still doing the same thing and if that opportunity comes along you'll be there to take it so it's like 
you know, I don't mind playing intimate shows, little shows. I think those are some of the best things like in the world. We forget that the majority of the mu- musicians aren't like charting artists. Like in like, there's some amazing artists out there that you can find in a dive bar sometimes and just be overwhelmed at how good they are and just fall in love with the music again. Like, you know, I, I was at a show last night. I went to a punk show last night and I was just sitting there and like, they were playing, it was, <laughs> I'm such a pussy, but they, they were playing, they were playing this fast punk rock music, but they had dedicated the song to this guy in the crowd that had cancer. And I wanted to fucking cry while I'm listening to this punk rock heavy music. And I'm like, but that's, that's what this is. That's what the power of this is, is like somebody is literally holding on to their life and saying that this song is the reason that I'm, that I'm holding on. Like that's, I can get emotional about it right now, bro. Like just cause it's it like. It just means so much. So if you can fall in love with that and it's what you do, like that's it's it's what I do. Like, you know, yeah. you catch me in ten years, even if I'm not, you know, putting out music, you'll still find me playing guitar on my couch making music. Like it's still gonna happen. Music is so powerful. And I recently had annoyed on and you know, one thing he said was, What would life be without music? And, you know, it's such a quick statement. But like, you know, I'm in the gym yesterday listening to like Ash Nico, who I wouldn't listen to outside of the gym, but her music really pumps me up. Uh, but I'm like, I wouldn't be able to do this right now. There's just no way. So it's like just the way that music affects everything in your life. And, you know, it's just crazy. The impact that I mean, music I got, has. I got the outcast tattoo. Oh, that's I sick, got the dude. MXPX tattoo. Like, and yeah, like those are artists that just like when I think there's a lot of times where like with ashtray right like i remember ashtray and i was like okay everybody knows me as a rapper and i'm rapping on the record but i'm mostly singing on this record they haven't really heard me sing like a full record i'm kind of nervous and then i was just like i wonder if like i wonder if outcast was nervous when they dropped at aliens you know like coming off of southern playlistic and they were all rapping and then they would come with these, these all new styles and like they changed themselves every album and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Well, what would Outkast do? You know what I mean? They would just say, does it feel good, I guess? You know what I mean? Like, and everything felt good. So that's kind of what I go on now is just like, I have so many different genres that I, you know, listen to and whatever, but I, I try to just stay true to myself as far as like how I make my music. Yeah, dude. I want to pull it back a little bit though, too, because, you know, in 2013, you were still mostly rapping, all rapping, but you went up to Hot 93.7. Oh, yeah. You did. Oh, damn. Yeah, with uh, G Fresh, right? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> it's your life, dude. You tell yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was uh, something that, that range hooked up. Yeah, we did. Uh, what we was did... that experience like, too? And where were you at in your career at the time? Ah, uh, shit. Where was I? What was I doing in 2013? What kind of what music was out then? Um, I know. I think Selfless was out. Selfless was out, yeah. So we probably were just promoting that. I also did a couple things with KG at the time where we did some like remixes with uh, his son, Kev Clark and uh, a DJ Chris Styles that we did with them. Uh, what did, I'm trying to think of what I was, I think he was just like, it was kind of just like a, a, a showcase or like a highlight of, of a new record that I had that we, that he was playing up there. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you exactly which one, but yeah, that was my first time I up there. I've never been up there since. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but I know, I know after that you, you were tired at 21, dude. Yeah, 21 and tired, man. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about that project? Yeah, let's do it. That, that Bill Cosby sample didn't, didn't age well. Age well. <laughs> It's all good, dude. <laughs> it happens, to the, dude. It happens. How could you have known? No. How could you have known? It's a great no clip, way. though. It's a great. It's a great sample. But yeah. So, how did that project come to be? Like, where were you at in your life when you worked on that one? Twenty-one and tired. Let me see that. So, so that I was, I was working with Chuck. Was that the one that had night on it? This is the rhythm of the night. Dude, and I saw that music video in uh, Times Square, right? Yeah, I almost got hit by cars so many times in that video. It looked dangerous. I yeah, was, was thinking that while I was watching it. Um, that was just like, that 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 whole era taught me how to like uh, say it doesn't matter. Like I went down there and he was like, all right, we need a photo shoot for this. We need a photo shoot for that. We need a video for this. And then in my head, I'm like, oh, how are we going to do this? And he was like, what do you mean how we're going to do it? We're going to do it. We're going to shoot it ourselves. And I have a guy that's going to do this. And he's like... And it was just very much like, oh, like you can outsource and you can, you know, like he showed me like the way it works of like running, not run and gun all the time, but like, you know, you got to just make this happen. However, whatever means we have. And like all those videos and all that stuff was like, you know, 
let's make this happen with what we have. So like, yeah, 21 and tired. I think I was still in, still in college. Damn. What was, what even was on that record? It's crazy how like, you know, even with some of my older projects too, like I'll think back and it's just I'm, like, they can I even of, name that full track list? You know what yeah, I mean? Oh, I'd, no way could I name the full track. There's 21 and tired. Maybe night was on there. Yeah, because I don't even know if I don't even know where those. Maybe I think I have CDs of those. I'd have to go back and listen to those. Did you Did you find the albums? Did you actually like? Listen? I didn't find oh, okay, the albums. Okay, okay. I saw them on your grid, but I saw you had a bunch of them like physically yeah, like oh, printed too. Like dude, gear we, of like. I mean, I still print my CDs, but it was different back then when you printed oh, your CDs. Oh yeah, we were yeah, dude. We we were uh, my brother. My brother worked for a media company, so they had like the mass printer, the one where you can put like 50 to 100 in there and just let it go and let it walk away. And like a couple hours later, all your CDs will be duplicated. So he would do that for me. And then um, me and me and my g girlfriend at the time, now wife, we would sit in my living room and we would we had stamps. So I would get a stamp made of the record, like 21 Tired, Ian Matthew. And she would stamp and boom, stamp it. And then I would put the CD together. And then we ended up doing it all by hand from selfless to 21 and tired. Uh, if walls could talk and then strangers as well, we did all by hand. Like that was completely like, I would get, I would buy the covers, have those shipped to me. I'd buy the sleeves, had this, you know, and then put them all together. And our, that was like the, that was the hustle back in the day. Yeah, dude. I really enjoy it. Like I definitely was on that grind back in the day too, dude. Oh like my God, there's just something time. about that era, dude, that like, there was just something very charming about those CDs, you know? Yeah. It's sad. I mean, it's, it sucked because it was like, if you did it right, it was the perfect either business card where all your information was on it. And like, if you trusted in your music enough, go give it away for free and see if you can get those people and take the loss on it. Or if you felt like you trusted in your music enough to, to charge for it, then charge for it. And then you can get a return on your investment. Cause you know, you were spending, you know, up to a grand on those CDs, maybe, maybe a little less, but you know, if you get them all made, but like the way we did it, we, it was, you know, economy based. We were like, okay, if we put them all together ourselves, it's far cheaper. So like, let's do that. It ended up being like, maybe like 300 bucks for the batch of CDs that we had, but like you sell them for five a pop. I had, a, I had a friend, I had a friend that made like, he made like 10 racks on selling CDs, man. Like just selling them hand to hand combat, 10 bucks a piece. Dude. And like, that's the thing. Like if pe especially with like live shows and stuff, like nowadays, at least with yeah. live shows, like still have CDs because people like something tangible. You yeah. know what I mean? Like people want to have like that little memory from the show. Yeah, I just wish it was, like, not so, like, even then, because then you just end up, like, what do you do with it? Like, you can't, it's not like a record where you can, like, hang it up then on your wall. Like, I always say buy, coaster, buy, dude. buy, yeah, yeah. Oh, what a fuck, <laughs> a disservice. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, not, not even a disservice, it's just the technology is outdated, the, so yeah. it's like, it became obsolete, but it sucks because in the technology becoming obsolete, you lose the, the thrill of, like, I always say this, do you remember when, like, an album came out that you really loved. Oh yeah. I remember being in this I remember when when the Carter the Carter 3 came out. Like I remember there was a frenzy and you had to get to the store in time where you could buy a copy. And then you go and you rip off the thing and you put the CD in your in your uh, CD player and you open up the booklet and you're reading it and you're reading the lyrics with it maybe if that album gave you the lyrics and you're like, "Oh man, there's a whole photo shoot for the entire album." It was a bigger experience. There's a thank you there was it was an it was an actual experience. Now it's just hey man the the, the album came out at midnight. I'm gonna pop my headphones in in my in my bed and just play it, which is fine. Like I get it. I'm the same way and I get excited, but I feel like it's not the same. Uh, you're just getting the music before you got the experience of like you know I I never forget when I got the corn I think it was follow the leader and I opened it up and there was like all like the naked chicks in the in the background on, on their on their pictures and I was like oh my god this is so crazy. I was a little kid, you know what I mean? But it was just like. There was something to it of like I have to get to the store and buy this and and hope I have you know like I don't know hope I have enough time to get there before it's sold out or this album's gonna be so you know and it's, and then the the artist would get paid off of it the artist you know you could probably they were getting a, a percentage off those albums and now artists aren't you know what are we selling physically anymore other than like t-shirts and merch but it's kind of hard sometimes to sell a a shirt with your name on it. I'm sure there is something that could be done today. You'd have to be an artist with like. You'd have to be putting up some real good numbers, but like I think it'd be cool if an artist like today like did that, where it's like they just didn't put their album on streaming right away, 
and just did a physical release. The thing is, the game has adapted so much that it probably would end up hurting the album rather than helping it. But if somebody was to do it just for the sake of the art, I think that would be dope. Well, like the physical release could could be still a digital release, but the physical release comes with like how you did like you did the photo book, right? Mm. So this one for a release you do a you do an album same size and it comes with the flip book, maybe same size, maybe a little bigger, comes in a little box set or something that you're still paying fifteen, twenty dollars for, so the consumer is getting something. Gives you a little insight into the album. You still get the thank you. Maybe you get a lyric. You get, you know, some stickers. Some It's like a little bus, so a smaller box set. But then you get the digital download, which maybe isn't necessarily on the, the big streaming platforms. And like you said, you'd have to be an artist that has numbers that's fan, that fans are going to say, hey. But I also think that there's some, you know, independent artists that I think Easily we have found. Off yeah, too. we yeah. found that fans uh, show no limit to to how how much they will they will support an artist if they really love you. So like, or love the love your art, I guess I would say. But um, so like, yeah, you can. I think I actually think that's that's possible to pull off if you were to like. I think I think engaging with our with our you know supporters and our and our listeners is so important where like you could go to them and ask and be like hey guys like i'm an independent artist it's really hard for me to get money off these streams if i'm being completely honest with you um here's kind of how we generate our money but if i were to throw this over here and you guys bought this it would bring you here. You'd get the album. And I think it's just, it's it's user-friendly. It needs to be user-friendly, right? Yeah. Because, well, like, that's the thing right now is, like, you can go on and maybe you just want to, it'll still be the experience because you're not in it with all the other stuff, you know? So you are having to go to a certain place and da 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 this and that. Maybe that's what they want. But I think you can work it out with your fans or, like, with supporters of, like, hey, here's how we're going to do this now. Because you have, you have Patreons, you have groups, you have all these different things where, like, Communication it's, is there. Yeah, it's it, and it and it's a chance for the supporter to to you know say, hey, I want to not necessarily put my money over here to get the whole the whole you know all of the music. I want to put my money over here just because I like this music. And I think I think the world will become much more uh, specific on where we spend our money like that in the future. But it's a good uh, like like groups. We're we're gonna, we have our grouped the Ian Matthew coffee club. So like yeah. that one's, you know, that's like the way that we're going to be able to find all of the people that are supporters and put them in one place so that we can all create this community of like, let's write a song together. Let's hang out together. What do you guys think of this? Should I drop this record first? Hey, I have these two records. Which one do you want? You know, like, does yeah. It get- and I think, I think it's really cool that the people that do support you do have a say, you know what I mean? I like, I enjoy that part of it too, because it's like, you know, like, just giving them the option to, I recently had, uh, the song that I just dropped the other day. I had my group supporters name the song. I just was like, let me know what this song is called. And oh, that's cool. I will call it that. We, you know did, what I mean? we did that with by my side on TikTok. Oh, amazing, yeah. dude. That's dope. Yeah, no, it's, it's just cool because like you create, I've met so many good people throughout this, this journey of making music where like the people that listen have become just as important as the producer that I'm in the room with you know what I mean like I want to know if you really like this song you know sometimes they'll be like yeah I like this one but I like this one better and I, I'll ask why why do you like and they're like oh, I don't know it's just more upbeat more you know it just caught me better and then I'll start thinking more into it like okay cool like maybe I'll drop that one first I know that they like that one I know that this person is is really waiting for it I'll do that one I'll give, do them a solid right they've supported me so much like and I can have fun with it I'm not at a level where like there's anybody telling me what to do so like if I want to make it where it's like hey guys I got a you know a fishbowl of ideas everybody write down a song idea we'll pick a song idea and now you guys help me write the song then all of a sudden when that goes up they're like yo I was a part of that I mean, I'll give I'll give everybody credits too. So when you go look at the Spotify, here's your name there too. Like, you know what I mean? That'd be pretty cool. That is really dope, dude. Like, I want to change it up a little bit though, because I want to ask you a question that I haven't asked anybody, but I've been wanting to ask this question. If you were to start from zero today, you know what I mean? Just in the music, what's the first thing that you would do? At zero, no music out, just starting from zero. You still have the talent that you have. Hmm. Uh... Ooh. I would, what would I do? 
It's a tricky question, dude. It's a tricky to be question because I'm trying to figure it out if I would approach it from a passion standpoint or if I would approach it from a business standpoint. From a business standpoint, I would immediately hop on social media and start with uh, what I know now about social media. You know, I would start completely new uh, quality of the content wise, um, the purpose of the content, like all that stuff where I had to learn that as I went, where like you hit different valleys and peaks and whatever. Uh, I would just say, I don't know though, because starting now would be tough, but I guess not because you have so many. Yeah, I would just go super hard on socials. Like I would, I would maybe... There's a lot to do to get a career started, though. That's one thing where it's like, you know, the things that you I would maybe have a vault. I would maybe start with at least getting like three to five songs down that I really, you know, and that, I guess that's the thing, too. If I'm starting from zero and there's no time limit on like, you know, I feel like once you start, got to keep, keep it going. You got to keep the wheel spinning. Right. So I feel like before you even start the wheel, if you can go in there with like a really good base of of. If this one takes off, I have this one. Or if this one doesn't take off, I have this one. And then you can go down your line because you know, like, you can work on six, seven records, and then next thing you know, they're gone. They're already out. And you're like, okay, now what? And maybe not now what, but you're like, okay, we have this other batch that we really got to get to now. But, like, it, it happens fast where those records go. So, like, and it could happen really fast where they take off if they're good. So, like, I don't know, starting from scratch, I'll I probably just make sure I have a vault like, or at least five or six songs that I'm like really, you know, solid on and then get them well recorded and then go from there. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that you don't even think about too. Like, you know, some things that artists might not know is like, you got to get distribution. You got to get oh. like publishing. There's so many things that like artists could like, you know, there's just so many other aspects of it where it's like, you know, getting your YouTube artist channel. Oh yeah, you know? I, re I remember breaking down to my to my wife even just what it costs to uh, release a record. Yeah, like to, from from paying, you know, whoever you've worked with to produce the record, from you know your monthly DistroKid account that you pay for to to release the, the promo that you want to do, the uh, the engineer that you pay to mix all of it. If you pay to get it mastered, like it's just, there's just uh, so many different lanes. And well, what were you saying right before too, with the, um, talking about like publishing and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. With, with publishing. And then it's like, then you have to go and collect that on the other side. So you oh, have to yeah. have the, your ass cap set up so you can collect all that, which costs money. And then, you know what I mean? Like it's, there's, it's a whole process too, to like, like it's crazy the end the startup fee for like having a music career. I mean, if you were to break it down into the absolute basics, a laptop I think is important. Like I think a laptop yeah. is an essential. You know, getting the recording software. However, you decide to do that, just get that recording it's software. Right you there, can, you're looking at two. Yeah, you know 1, what I mean. Fifteen hundred, three hundred to four for your for your DAW. Yeah, and it really did, and this is more for like an independent artist that's trying to record themselves too. You know, there yeah. is the option of studio time, but like. In the long run, you end up saving money if you just well, get the setup yourself. Do, do you remember where you were when you recorded yourself the first time when you tried to mix yourself? If you really want to release that record for the if you're recording yourself for the first time, you're you are a long way away from where That's that record is. That's very true to too. And you know, I didn't even start tracking like records that I worked on until later on, until I had the guidance of the engineers that I worked with for so long, where they just were like, "Yo, we can't even work with these files. You got to record it like this, 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 yes. and this." And then, then we can, then you can set them to me. You got to organize it like this. You know yeah, what I mean? I so. recorded, I recorded some demos the other day and I was, I was pretty confident in the, in the quality of them. And I was sent them over to my engineer and I was like, yo, can you mix these for me? And he was like, Hey, do you mind if we re-record these? There's just some like frequencies in here that like, I want to get out. And I just think I need, you know, my mic with my preamp. And I think it just sound a lot better. Yeah. And like, there's levels obviously, but you can get, you know, you can get decent recordings from at home and then. The recent, like you said, it's a resource of finding either the time to learn how to mix it yourself or finding somebody else that's going to mix it for a price you can afford. Yeah, <laughs> it's so true, dude. What are, what are some tools though that you've used in your career? Like even just today that like, if you were put onto game earlier, this would have been like fire to know. GarageBand. If you're starting like GarageBand is, is Logic Lite. 
So if you get good at GarageBand, go go buy Logic, and then you'll have you know more access to things. And like, but I remember there was there was a, a producer I worked with. Or I don't know. I didn't work when we were just in the studio chopping it up, and he showed me this these these records he made, and I was like, these are sick, dude. He's like, yeah, I recorded them all on my iPad on GarageBand. Crazy. And I looked at him, and I was like, really? And like, I ended up I ended up putting them headphones. Going to Spotify, playing another record, seeing how they matched up, and I was like, "This sounds really good, man!" Like, it's you, almost like you—I I would get mad. I'd be like, "Dang, yeah. I'm like well, working well, all the way with all these crazy stuff, well, and this is GarageBand on the iPad." Yeah, to to me, I was I was just more I was more thinking like, "Oh, for demos, this could be really good if you can if you can record a really good demo and you can get as close to what you want." in that demo where if you have to send it out to other producers or you have to work with multiple people on the record, if you can get that really good, it helps you a lot more. If you can like really hone in on what your idea is for this song. And I've, I've always thought that like a quality demo, sometimes I can get it in my voice memos, I think. And I, and, and that will get the idea across if it's me and James and he knows me, but like if you can get a quality demo, it just makes for me, that song happens so much faster. I get so excited about a good fucking demo, dude. And I listen to that demo, and I'm like, okay, I want to go record the real thing. All right, here's what... And the demo's already dialed in, like, pretty good. So I'm like, okay, I know what I want to do here, 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 and here. This is missing here. This is missing here. We go into the studio with notes. So, like, having something like that where you can record a demo on the go is, like, you could just plug in, like, a USB mic. And I'm not, I'm not saying it needs to be, you know studio quality i'm just saying like to get that demo where you can listen get the to idea it. yeah you can listen to it and you won't be like ah the static or whatever it is like it's you know appealing to the ear that would be great um i would say stuff like that but it's so like like a like one of these sm7b i wish somebody told me about these a while ago they're great mics. They're great dude. mics. And then you see them pop up you know in the last five years with all the podcasts and stuff but then you find out like they're great recording mics these are great for demos. Maybe not like, you know, essentially the one that you'll find in the studio you're recording at, but like... I see people tracking records with these oh, all I the see, time, I see dude. them all the time in more home studios, you know what I mean? But like, and that's what I realized. I was like, oh shit. Like these, like, and this is a, what, 500 bucks for this SM7DB, the one that comes without the, without the, cloud, oh, yeah. without the cloud lifter. So like, I don't know. I, w I would just say don't always go for like the, the most expensive thing if you're just like starting out because you'll you'll end up spending a lot of money and sometimes it's discouraging afterwards you're like i just you know yeah what's some advice that you have for artists on the rise don't stop like if you really love it just do it like if you love it do it like do it because you want to do it you know otherwise otherwise you'll get so caught up in like numbers and success and like the i've never been happier and like, I care about that stuff because I want to see my business grow, but I'm not, uh, like my happiness doesn't depend on it, you know? So like if, if music is what you love to do, let music be what you love to do. Let the, like, I'm telling you, if you walk into a, into a room with musicians, it, they don't, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, at least the ones that I've come and encounter with, your streams don't matter. Like if you're a musician, you really love this shit and you're, and you're good at it and you're in a room with other musicians, you're going to get the respect from your peers. So like, I would always, you know, just stay true to yourself and make the music that you want to make because like people will relate to it if, if you can actually relate to it. If you, we see so many artists that will put out something and like you meet them and it's kind of like, oh, it's not you. Or like, mm. or you just, you know, you see like, you oh, this is an act. Like you, you see, you realize like, oh, this is an, which is fine, but it's hard to, it's hard to connect when, when the person doesn't match the, the art, you know what oh, I mean? So yeah. Like, and as like a consumer of music, you probably end up getting turned off because it's like, how are you going to preach this in your music? And then your reality is not that, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like yeah. dis disingenuous a little and bit. And also too, like, I would just say like, if you're, if you're, uh, an artist, I would just say like, lose the ego and make sure that every room that you go into, you're thinking like, how do I make this better? And like, I think and that that's another thing too, is if I, what I should have said is if you have a group of musicians that don't, that, that lose the ego and they can all just be in there and just work with each other and just respect, 
you know, what's going on. It's the, the greatest environment in the world. There is absolutely nothing like being in a room with musicians that. It's a good vibe. Oh my God. It's just, it's amazing. Cause we're all, we're all creatives. We all, you know, and, and we, we love talking about music and, and different eras and shit like that. But I would just say like, just, just try to le- go into the room as nice as you can. If you, if you make that room better and a more peaceful place, you're in a, but you're in a better spot already. And then try and get with as many, as many people that you, you know, are influenced by or that you find appealing in any way and just pick their brains and be like, yo, like, do you want to, I would always say, I was, I also say, send the cold, send the, send the message, um, to the artists that you want to work with. Cause like, there's a ton of, you know, artists that I've done that with and I've, you know, it's worked out for me or like, we just formed a relationship or like, even like, like, even like the, Sh- the Sholi record that I did, it was such a funny story because I had heard his music like a couple maybe like month, like a month or so prior in my, in my friend's car. I'm like, yo, who is this dude? This dude's fire. He goes, yo, he's from Bridgeport. He's, his name is, name is Sholi. He's from, cause my, my homie's from Norwalk. So I was like, oh my God, this dude is fire. And like a month later, I get a DM from Sholi. He's like, yo, bro, I think I got a song for us. And I'm like, what? It was like, Small I was like, world, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, I was a little like, Oh, like it's kind of not starstruck, but I was like, "Yo, this is this." I the really, universe is funny. Like sometimes. when you respect some, when you respect somebody for their craft, it's it's like I I I look at him a little differently in the sense of like I know how smart he has to be to craft what he crafts. So I like I look at that like a very, very respectful. So like when a mind like that reaches out to someone like me, it's, it makes me feel good because I'm like, oh, I know this dude is smart. Like so he put me on the record and like it was just a cool story of being like a fan first and then like having it come full circle where like very quickly too. he reached very quickly, which is, <laughs> it was, it was so cool. And like now we, we've maintained a relationship where like, you know, we don't, we don't talk all the time, but like, you know, if he drops something, I always reach out and be like, yo bro, so, you know, and I don't, I don't expect him to be like the biggest Ian Matthew fan, and like listen to my music, but like we still like just pen to pen, like, there's a respect for each other there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think respect is something that's so important in music. Like I think if people were chasing respect more than success, they'd probably end up being more successful. Yeah. And, and respect in a way of just like respect for the craft of like, I'm going to put so much time into my craft. You're going to have to respect me. I think that's exactly what like Sholi and Annoyed are. It's like, you can't Sholi, Sholi Webby and Annoyed. I would say like, can't deny the pen, you dude. Can't, yeah, like the pen is just astronomically good. Like you look at it, whether you read it on a piece of paper, whether you take the lyrics and read them on a piece of paper, or you, or you listen to it and have to rewind it a million times to, to be like, whoa, I find, I caught another one. I caught another one. You're like, that's it's your respect. You, the, the pen is never lies. Yeah, and I want to talk to you about a record that you were on, Highway with Tropics. Yeah. You told me you had a funny story about this record and we'd save it for the podcast. Yeah, the the the, the funny story about that record was me and James wrote that record um in the car going up to uh I was doing a set with Shane. Yeah, I was doing a I was Shane was opening up for Webby. He was doing like three spots on the on the on his tour, on the end of his tour. So we were driving up to Maine to come do those Webby shows with Shane and we wrote highway in the car on the way up while we were on the highway. Incredible. Dude. And it was just like, it was a, and that's what I mean is like, it was one of those, like just a, a, a creative moment that kind of like just went to me. That's the epitome of not overthinking a record. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was really cool because, but I think we were just in the right mindset of like, we were gassed up for the road trip. Who doesn't love a good road trip to Maine? Right. Yeah. So four hour road trip, we're gassed up. You got your snacks, you got your, you know, you, whatever you do on the ride there. And then you got your good music and like he, Tropics had hit me up and he was like, yo bro, I, I think we should do a record. He sent me the record and we were, we were driving and I think James just, you know, came up with that. And I was like, all right, there's something there. And then we just kept going, kept going, kept going. And like eventually by the time we got to wherever we were in Maine, or no, maybe it was New Hampshire at the time, but wherever we got to, it was it was done. And we were like, okay, cool. When we get back, we got to record this. And like we immediately recorded it and like went a couple of sessions back and forth and then we got the record done. And for the people that don't know that and, are like tuning in, I mean, this record has over a million streams at this point. Yeah. Second one? 
I think that one hit million first, and then Astray. Astray. Yeah, and then Astray. So oh, Astray dope, is my first solo record that hit a million, and then like Tropic. I tried the record with Tropic, which was like my first like co-written, you know. Co-op. How's that feeling when you have your first record hit a million, dude? Like just looking at it, knowing that your voice has been heard, yeah, a million times. It's it's cool, man. It's it's you know until you look at the the payout you get from it, you're kind of like, oh. but, yeah. but you know, no, it's cool because uh, it's like a number that everybody sets. It makes you want to get makes you want to get there again, but I re- but it's also very humbling when you see your other records that don't, and it's kind of like the the records are all very special to you because they're your records. Yeah, what happens with them when they go out is is on the listener and and whoever connects with them, and then and who, the algorithms too. To be and honest, that, and I was gonna say, and who you get it in front of is also on on you a little bit as well for putting out content to get it there, right? So, like, I, I see... Ashtray has a mind of its own. I don't remember the last time I did a video for Ashtray, or Highway, for that matter. So those are, like, kind of in their own algorithm on Spotify as it, as it is. Um, but, like, Lucky, I did the video with my dog. And, and that's had, your most listened to song right now, yeah, too. Yeah, I did the video with my dog. I want to talk about that. Which I just thought was going to be, like, you know, I was just being funny. I was like, yo, I got a TV dog. Check it out. And, like... Four million views later, or something, and like, luckily, my song was on the back of it, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, like that one's starting to take off as well, and I'm seeing like the numbers go up on it, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. They kind of like take a life, take on a life of their own. Do you think that's a translation from the viral TikTok with your dog? Yeah, I believe so. I think there has to be, right? Like, there has to be. You'd want there to be. Yeah, you because I, I mean, mean? It, it it started afterwards. It was definitely like not. It wasn't doing poorly but it wasn't doing what it's doing now you know what i mean like yeah i guess poorly is very subjective subjective right? yeah. yeah but no it's good and especially like with spotify it's nice when you have those moments where a new record kind of dethrones an old record yeah. you're like all right i got it and the thing too about having a record hit a million to me it's like validity but in the sense where it's like this is possible like yeah. i can do this and you know Every record doesn't need to hit that, but the idea of that it could hit that yeah. is very nice. I also think that, too, there's, like, this weird uh, insecurity that artists have. There's always, like, I've never met an artist that I run into where I mentioned the uh, imposter syndrome where they're not like, yeah, me too. And there's this weird thing that we have where, like, we we get into a room with other people sometimes or, like, we listen to ourselves and we wonder if, like, is the rug going to be pulled out from under me and I'm going to find out I'm, I'm not good at this? Like, you know what I mean? Have I, have I been, you know, have I been in a vacuum where all these people are lying? Like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of far. It's such a far fetched idea, but you also like, you know, you have, you have different insecurities as an artist, which is so funny because then we get on a stage or we put out these records of our deepest, darkest thoughts. And we're like, Hey, listen to me, listen to, listen to what I'm saying, you know? Yeah. And it's so funny, but like, um, I think it's, I think it's weird how, how we do that, but we're also, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, dude. Well, the thing too, like my career, like how I feel about my career, because I hear a lot of people talk about imposter syndrome. Oh yeah. I hear, I saw Russ made a post about it the other day where he's like on stage in an arena and he's like feeling that he has imposter syndrome. Dog, I don't have imposter syndrome. No. Never, dog. And I think I, I kind of like thought about this for a little bit. It's like, why is everyone? Because even like people that aren't in music will tell me where they're having like a moment in their like job or career or whatever they're doing. And they'll tell me they're like, this can't be real. But I think the base of my career is survival, right? So it's like I when I started my career, yeah, I was trying to survive. You know what I mean? Like it was do or die. So like you know, when we talk about like starting from zero, you know what I mean? Like I've done that, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, if I had to do it again, could I do it? And like, I think I could. And like, I don't know. I just don't deal with it. Cause I think like it's been very gradual, you know what yeah, I mean? The, so uh, I the, think I, maybe I would, if something like astronomical happened and yeah. I would just be like, you well, know, I feel, I feel like the comp that there's a, there's a certain level of confidence in yourself that you gain from, um, you are a very confident person. I appreciate that about you. I, I do. I, I do. I do. I do appreciate that. Um, for there's a like I said, there's that that weird balance of like 
for me, I sing, but I'm rarely the best singer in the room. What I've had to do is become comfortable enough with my voice and what I can and can't do and how I translate my emotion. I had a singer tell me one time, she was a really good singer, and she said to me, she said, you don't, you don't. She's like, you don't have the best voice in the room. I'm, I'll be honest with you. And I was like, no, I understand that. She's like, but, she's like, when you sing, I believe you. She says, I believe that the emotion that's coming out, she said, you're not singing poorly. She's like, you're just not fucking, you know, the dude from Maroon 5. She's like, you're not, you're not Adam Levine. You can't hit that crazy high notes. You can't do it. But she's like, but when you sing, I feel the emotion. And she's like, and that translates. She said, that's worth something. She's like, there's people that can hit all the notes in the world, but they can't translate and no one cares. She's like, you make people care when you, when you put out a record and you sound like, oh, damn. That's, so I, I, I gained confidence in that of like, and also, too, I grew up listening to, like, punk rock. So, like, the punk rock singers weren't the greatest singers. But they got it there, and they're, they were, it was great. We, I just showed you those old Blink-182 records, and I was yeah, like, listen dude. to how these guys used to sing. It wasn't, it wasn't perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they got to that point. So, like, I just think there's, there's, a, there's a certain level of art. Look at Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan couldn't sing that well. Like, best singer is so subjective, dude. Like, yeah, no, but I'm, I, it is, but like, I, there's, there's people who are like, like more technical. Yeah, tech where you can hit that yeah. run and you hit every note in the run, and, and, and that's great. And I envy that. I envy that so much. But I also, and I, and I used to be very insecure because I couldn't do that. But, but I found like where I sit in the equation. I feel like I've found you where I'm gonna play to your strengths, dude. Yeah. And, and, and that is what makes your art art right and that's what makes it is like there's certain restrictions and certain things that aren't restricted that you can act on and you can't act upon and that's what makes the Ian Matthew sound the Ian Matthew sound so it makes it unique yeah I want to talk to you about a couple more of your records too before we close this out let's do it one of my personal favorite records every time that season rolls around oh uh. I got to throw on Holiday Song, dude. It's a sad song, but, dude, that one just hits for me because yeah. I've never been, and this might come as a surprise because I'm typically a very happy person, but I am not really a big holiday guy. Really? I, I know. I remember when you told me that, I was so surprised. Yeah, like, I've just never been a big, like, and my mom's going to, like, listen to this and she'd be like, what do you mean you weren't a big, because my mom definitely was a, she's yeah, a yeah, big yeah. holiday, like. So you come, you come from a big holiday family, I but it just big, didn't rub off on you. Yeah, and, like, and maybe it will, like, I thought maybe if I had kids, yeah. that would yeah. be the thing that would change it for me, but. Yeah. No, so how did Holiday Song come to be? Because I just absolutely adore that song personally. So every, every artist that is anybody has either a Christmas album or a Christmas song they've done, right? So we were like, all right, what Christmas song can we cover? And it just, I don't know, it did, didn't do it for me. So I was like, okay, let's write a song. Let's, let's go for our All I Want for Christmas, right? Let's do it. So we started with uh, same instrumentals, a Jake Angel instrumental. Um, and it was very cliche happy holiday song. It was like, you know, I had to write a holiday song. So I don't even remember what the original lyrics were, but I remember like there was a line about uh, grandma getting you socks and hot chocolate and Christmas cookie. It was just like, it was very cliche, but we wanted it to, to be cliche. Like we wanted it to be like, you know, like everybody does it. So I had to do it too. So I'm going to do it. And just, and it was kind of a, not a parody, but like, an, uh, or like not a joke. You just were really diving into yeah, it. Yeah. I was just like, let's just go for it. And we got, all the way to the studio, recorded maybe the first verse in the first chorus or something like that, and we just looked at each other and we were like, nah, there's nothing here. I'm like, there's nothing to connect to. There's absolutely nothing that, like, makes me want to sing this song. So we were sitting in the studio, and I honestly think the only thing we had that day was that song to work on. So I went back and rewrote it in the studio, and I was just thinking, and I actually had a roommate who absolutely despised Christmas. Like, absolutely despised it for his own reasons, rightfully so. Um, and it just, Christmas time was just rough for him. So I thought about all those people and I was like, huh? Cause I remember he mentioned to me one time, he's like, I, I hate this season. I walk into every store and it's Christmas shit. It's, like, it's Christmas songs all the time, which would sound very grinchy to most people. But like, if you, if you knew him, it, it makes sense. Yeah. So, um, I was like, okay, I want to write a song for those guys. I want to write a song for those people that like. They don't really like, they don't hate it, but it's hard. 
it's tough. It's so a they, tough time they, of year for run, a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, so I was like, okay, let's go into that. Recorded it, hard to, hear, hard to Hear a Holiday Song, and I played off all, like, the, the verses are just playing off of all the typical Christmas songs, you know, and, like, kind of a different spin on them and using them in there. But um, we loved it when we were done. Like, this is, this is it has, it has a meaning, it has an emotional connection to it. There's something that we can, you know, grab onto. So we did it, we put it out, um, and I was, like, blown away at how many people were, like, Dude, I get it. This is my song. And unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, the thing that's weird is like a lot of people took me as like a, I, like I was writing it about myself. Like a, I don't, mm. I am personally the complete, I, I love Christmas. <laughs> I absolutely love Christmas time. I love winter time in New England. I think that the house is warmer. The, the, the love feels better. Like it's just, I just love, there's something about it I love. So but I also understood that it's hard for other people. And like in being an artist is sometimes you make art for other people. You make art for, you know, the consumer. And and if the consumer will connect to this, I felt like I could connect to, you know, how you feel because I had such a good example as my roommate. Like I had long conversations with this dude, man. Like, and, and I understood why he didn't like it. So it was like, I felt like I could convey the message well enough and I had enough knowledge. So I think that's why it went over well. Um, and yeah, the song like still to this day, like I I can, I have a piano version I've done. Like there's a John the violinist did a violin version oh, to fire. it. Um, yeah, it was just uh, I had my boy Izzy Nice down in Jersey. He did a cover to it. Like it was just it's cool, man. It's and I, and I feel like a lot of people resonate with it. And like you can bring it up every year, so you kind of get a freebie now in, in December as far as like what your content is. If you want, you could just start making some Christmas content. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna try to work myself up to be a holiday person. And it's not even just Christmas. It's just like and I don't know what my deal is with like. I know what it is. What do you think it is? You you are such a work oriented person it feels like an obligation you have you have a schedule and you do what you do a certain thing or you have a certain amount of work that you like to get done in a certain day and then when those holidays come around that whole schedule goes out the door because you got to go shopping you got to be at a christmas party you got to do this there's this and that and this and that and then all of a sudden you're like my work has gone completely out the window so now you're stressed out during around these christmas times or like holiday times so you associate those holidays with the stress damn dude <laughs> I'll send you the invoice later. Yeah, dude. I mean, that probably sound, I mean, I am definitely a workaholic, but that, but I, I that went, feels I, right. I, I went through that. And like, and like you said, with the kids, like having, having my daughter, like Christmas means something completely different to me now. Mm. And like, but like I said, I also, you know, I went through a lot of changes myself where like I did too feel the same way where I was like, oh man, like this is, this is just taken away. And I was always, I was always very like, um, do you feel like we grew up in an era where we were taught that you have to work, 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 to the point where we started doing unnecessary work that wasn't, we were doing busy work? Like, I went to the studio a lot of times and recorded records that never came out. And it mm. wasn't like they were records that eventually turned into a different record that, you know, maybe came out or like a record that you took some lines from and like n never did anything with those records. So if, to me, that was a waste of time. Yeah. So like, when I think about how much time I've wasted back in the day just telling everybody oh I'm working I recorded 10 songs today yeah but none of them came out it was dude. like I did so much stupid work so I think with me personally dude I like there was a point in my life where like I had to make something happen right like I was at dark time in a young squire's life and I just needed to turn I had to make something happen and so I worked my butt off to get myself out of that dark place yep and then I just didn't stop like, after I was out the dark place, I just kept going. You know what I mean? Just, like, so that's where I think mine comes from because it's, like, you know, w when you're dealing with something in this moment and you have to work really hard at that particular second. Yeah. Like, I just kept my foot on the gas. I was, like, I don't want to be there ever again. Yeah, so I'm yeah. just going to keep going and just, like, not stop. So I, that's where I, I would have to talk. I think I need to go to, like, therapy. Not because, like, I don't think I need, like, Therapy, but I think everyone maybe needs therapy. Nah, therapy's I, cool, man. They're I think like, I could learn a lot more if you about have like myself. A if you have, just to have a third party person that doesn't know anything about you that can just give you kind of like a, a, you know, an objective perspective on something of like, hey, here's what science says behind that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I, I think that's always cool to take because like sometimes we don't want to listen to the ones around us. We don't listen to ourselves. We don't listen yeah. to the, like this person that you know they have no dog in the fight. Yeah, there's there's, there's no reason for them to lie to you, right? So like. I guess well, maybe these, some, some people can make the, the argument, but whatever. But, yeah. like, you know, I think it's worth it. Um, 
just to learn more about yourself. Yeah, like, or uh, one of my favorite things to do is ask myself why, right? Mm-hmm. If you if you have a question about yourself, ask why, and then we get the answer to that. Ask why, and then ask why, and ask why, and ask. Keep going down the why until you get, and usually you'll get like right to the core of it, and it gets like real dark depending on how how far you go maybe not even dark but just real uh eye opening depending on how far you go on the why 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 but it always comes back to you though mm. it always will come back to you and like i like with everything that i changed in my life i kept asking myself why is why is this situation like this for me well it's because of this well why is that like that well it's because of this why is that like that oh next thing I know always came back to being like because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing mm-hmm. that's how that you know what I mean yeah. that's how that's how I, that's literally like how you said like in, uh, you lost me from 2013 till now like there was a lot of asking why in that in that thing and figuring out like oh this is the best way for me to live my life the happiest and healthiest and I'm the I'm the happiest I ever been bro I can tell I, dude yeah like I'm the happiest I've ever been it's crazy though cuz when I'm scrolling on like you know all the way to the bottom of your feed it really felt like a different Ian that I know today and I was like this is crazy like I've ne- this is drastic yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean but it's awesome and I'm glad that like you're at a place now where you are the happiest and like I think you got to grow into yourself sometimes for sure you know what For I mean? For sure. Yeah, I had to figure out like what I wanted out of life. Yeah. I wanted like I wanted everything. I guess I wanted to, you know, feel like I could do it all and like I was just like unrealistic, I guess, with like what my like f- mental capabilities and physical capabilities were of like pushing yourself to just keep going and doing all this and like running around and and don't get me wrong, it's like it, it it taught me so much. Like I feel like all the stuff that I did was so worth it because I kind of did a lot of things wrong, but I also was doing things right in the midst of those. And I can now separate what the wrong move was and what the right move was. And like, you learn a lot from making the wrong play too. I like support people just making the play, even if they do it the wrong way. Yeah. Because you're just going to learn from it and you'll never do it again. Yeah. hundred percent. So I always support just like diving in, make I had this conversation with Spose, main dude. Yeah. But yeah, he just was like, there's no lesson better learned than when you personally get burned. hundred percent, bro. You know, hundred percent. Cause you, cause you, that, that, that feeling like sticks with you for the rest of your life. You like, if you, if you're somebody who hates being embarrassed and you get embarrassed by like either someone like, you know, someone burned you or, you know, you got burned out of a deal, whatever it may be, like that sticks with you forever. And you're like, I'm never going to do that again. Yeah. And then, and then you go into it. The negotiation next time is like, no, I've been burned before. So here's why I work like this. And you kind of have like an excuse as to like, I'm going to be a dickhead on this issue real quick, but here's why. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you know, let's talk about, you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about worth the wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I love that song, too. And, you know, that song is ingrained in my head from the amount of content you pushed with that record. You did, like, a really good job with that one. And I just, like, when I listen to it, it's just, like, I see the videos of you posting them, too. That's dope. How did that record come to be? Um, That was, like, I think that was a... You like a coat on the keys, you like... That was a co-write between me and James. And what James will do a lot of times is he's very good at like the the catchy choruses. Um and so he came to me in in the the Caught on the keys, you like a strum on the string. Mm. My favorite song in a car. And um and and I came in with the like a summertime day off. He and then he had the my favorite one to lay on. Rather mm-hmm. see your eyes and the stars. And we we're like, oh, this is cool. This is really cool. And um, it's like, a, it's just a feel good song, right? It's like one of those ones where you can't go, you can't go wrong. And it's kind of like the, uh, similar to how we, how we wanted to do holiday song, where it was like, this is the epitome of a Christmas song. I feel like this is like the epitome of a love, love song. Like, yeah. you're the only one I ever sit in traffic jams for. The only one I wait for to call. Like, that's so like if you have that person, you know yeah. exactly what it, what it means. Like if someone's like if you're in a long term relationship or like long distance, and they live two hours away or even an hour away, which I would consider long distance, that hour doesn't seem like shit. You, I'm, I drive the hour, it's fine, whatever. Who cares, dude? When I started dating my girlfriend, who I'm currently dating, yeah. uh, dude, I used to walk in. I didn't have a car, so I used to walk an hour, like you know what I mean. So. 
I wouldn't do that for anybody you else. You know what I'm though. saying? So, so you get it, right? So it's like, and then if like, uh, you're like a chord on the keys, right? So if if you have, I mean, I have a, I have like different chords that I just love, I, you know. And if you have a, if you have a, a pretty chord on the keys, there's just something about it, right? So it's like. Uh, a chord of the keys, a strum on the string. Same thing. For your favorite chord on the, my favorite song in the car. That feeling of of having like, your favorite song come on in the car. Yeah, it's it's like all those things I just thought were so like, such good descriptions of like how somebody could make you feel and like, as cheesy as it is, like. People like that. People stuff. like yeah, it, no, it it, the, the, but that's but that's how people make you feel sometimes, right? Yeah. Like that's like I'll I'll look at my wife and just be like, I love you. I just love you. It's just nice to just have this. It's just nice to be. And who are these cheesy police? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, no, I, where well, are you? Yeah, no, I think those are just people that are, you know, like, and, and that's, the, that's the thing, too, I notice is, like, even if even if you don't have that, you understand that people strive to get to that and, like, what, you know, everybody loves a good love song. You can't go wrong. Yeah, um, timeless. The only timeless. thing timeless, dude. Yeah. That was, a good, that was a good record. That's actually one of our favorite records to play live. That's, like, uh... That one does really well. We have a we have a blast doing that. We have like a little a little instrumental breakdown in that one that we do and like that that's one's awesome. That's the one where we like at, we introduced the whole band during that set. It's like that one that one's a good one. That's awesome, dude. Well, I kind of wanted to take this to the end, Ian. What's next for you, um, dude? I have so much music right now. I so I probably have like I probably have an album's worth of music. And I know me and you spoke about doing an album. I would you love were, when to, you, dude. Well, you were no, you were saying to me. I, I called you one day for some advice, and you were like, "I think you need to do an album." Yeah. Oh, bro, you need to do an album. And dude. I was like, uh, "So, so that's been on my mind, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with that." Um, but my my main goal is to just uh, we have uh, the Ian Matthew Coffee Club, so it's just to grow the community. Um, I want to I want to become more interactive with everybody, so that's why we're creating the 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 group community. That's why I created it. Um, and like I said, I want to start writing songs with like, with the people in the community and like have them be a part of the art that they like. Right. If you saw, if you saw, you know, Oh, like last night I was at the, I was at the show. I was at this punk show for MX, uh, MXPX show. This dude had a sign. He said, I play bass. Can I play bass for chick magnet? And he's like, you know what? All right, come on, come, come, come up. Let's play. Bro. The, 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 Sheer enjoyment watching this this kid who is playing bass with a band that I know he loves. He knew he knew the entire he knew that he knew how to play it on bass. He killed it, absolutely murdered it. But I was like, that is that is he's he got to be a part of that. He'll, he'll never forget that. Oh yeah, he'll never dude. forget that. So like, I want to bring the people in because like people will will ask me on my live sometimes, have you ever written a song about this or have you ever written a song about that? And I'm like, no, you know, I, I haven't. But like, that'd be a cool idea to dive into. Like I, I, I like writing songs that other people suggest because it makes me think from different perspectives, from different thought processes, um, you know, just different places and different people's worlds are like, one of my favorite ways to write is like, uh, my example is always a breakup, but if you're in a breakup, and I broke your heart, right? I did something to break your heart and now we're broken up. I'm going to write from your perspective. I'm going to write a song of you writing the song to me. So now I really have to tap into your emotions on how you feel of what I think you would want to say to me. And my, my challenge to myself is to always be non-biased where I'm like, although like this may make me seem look like, you know, I want to sugarcoat it because she's talking to me. It's like, no, 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 she would probably say that. All right, cool, let's do that. So you kind of, it's, it's cool because I get a different perspective on things. Um, but yeah, I want to I I grow the community. I want um, probably a single every like two weeks to every month probably is what, is what we're looking at. Um, and then maybe like, uh, I've had, I've had all the, I had a bunch of like cool ideas to do solo, like acoustic, really uncut raw stuff. Uh, we're doing it, we're doing an acoustic set right now our live set is all acoustic so that's kind of what we're playing with so um we're gonna start doing some more shows around the area and yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep releasing and i'll just continue to be on everybody's feeds for the remainder of the year yeah dude and if people want to tap in with you and find you where could they find you everything across the board ian matthew music tiktok instagram twitter uh what other social media platforms are there uh 
Ian, Ian Matthew Music dot com. Yeah. Ian Matthew Music across the board. Let's go, dude. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the Mike Squires and Friends podcast, yeah, dude. Yeah, bro. It's, it's been fun, man. This is dope. This is a great setup you got here. Man. Yeah, dude. Newly sponsored by DistroKid, dude. I'm a DistroKid user. I've released many a record on DistroKid. Yeah, me too. And I'm honestly so I'll talk about it real quick before we get out of here. <laughs> I've had sponsor opportunities before in the past. Never have I had a sponsor opportunity where it's like a service that I'm like already subscribed to. Already subscribed to, five year user, like very like it just really meshes with my like my brand because I always turned them down because it wasn't a perfect fit. Ashtray and Highway are both via DistroKid. And those both have millions of streams, you know. Yeah, so like it's it the user friendliness of it is is what we like about it. So it's you know, and you have full control. Yeah, dude. But I'm just feeling thankful. You know, I'm thankful to have you as the first guest with the the new background, the new sponsor. First time. And yeah, dude. So thank you for coming on. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, brother. So I want to share with you guys my thought of the day. And my thought of the day is this. You need to get started because growth is inevitable. You may not be perfect right now. Matter of fact, when you start, you won't be perfect. But perfection doesn't even exist. What you need to do is get started and you'll find yourself and continue to grow. And most importantly, you need to remember to believe before the world does.